right, Clip Studio Paint. Well, I've never used it, but Clip Studio Paint reached out to me and wanted to see if I'd like to try it out and make a sponsored review about it. So here it is. You know, I've heard a lot of great things about it, especially from my friend Zayden as well as Daniela, who both use it primarily to make their own art. Uh, so thanks to the both of them for giving me some tips on this program. So uh, my main focus will be this. I've used Adobe Photoshop to create art for a little over 20 years now. Uh, I've used it for school, college, professional industry, blah, blah, blah. So uh, diving into Clip Studio Paint will be an interesting experience. Uh, personally, I'm curious to see if I can pull off like uh, equal to or better quality result in sketching, painting, designing in Clip Studio Paint the same way I would in Photoshop or better. Uh, personally, I don't really do line art or animation. I know this program is really good for um, for line art uh, because of like the uh, brush stabilization and all that. But my main focus will be painting. So coming from a Photoshop background, I do know that Photoshop is mainly intended for image editing, post-processing, and uh, retouching and stuff, but it did somewhat steal the hearts of many digital painters, including myself. So let's see what we can do with Clip Studio Paint instead. So for my setup, I initially followed Eric Anthony's intro tutorial for beginners. The link for that is in the description. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things that Photoshop doesn't have that I wish it did uh, that automatically make things a lot more fluid. We'll get into that stuff later. Now, I just want to clarify this is not a tutorial video. This is my personal review, uh, sort of diving into it, trying to understand it and seeing if I could pull off some some images and then giving you my opinion afterward. Uh, so far, I've mostly heard of Clip Studio Paint being used for comics and manga, but I've also seen really great paintings by artists using the tools that Clip Studio Paint has to offer. Things like brush stabilization, blending, and the idea that the brushes feel natural and smooth is a pretty big draw, <laughs> draw uh, for artists. So uh, I'll know I'll have to get used to the UI and the hotkeys. There are some things that are similar to Photoshop, which will make an easy transition, but there's also some new things uh, for example, like right off the bat, this um, this feature here, where if you have, uh, well, let's use a different brush, something like this, and I want to erase it, I can. By the way, I have a really big canvas size selected, so that's why it's kind of laggy here. If I want to erase it, I press E, like I would in Photoshop, and erase it. Or if I have that brush selected still, if I press C, if you look over here, instead of it being uh, brown or white. It goes to this thing and it uses that same brush to erase. That's pretty cool. Photoshop does not have that. Layers work mostly the same, so you have a new layer and that's cool. The new thing for me is a vector layer. So basically, my understanding of this, and I don't plan on using this, but I can see why it's useful for certain things, is that it, it kind of makes things into a vector, meaning it's, it's editable. So if I press Control, I can move the little anchor points and it's, it's like a skeleton of everything that you put on here as a vector, which is pretty crazy to me, but I said it's not going to be tutorial and here I am explaining how to do the damn thing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is look at it in different sections. So drawing and sketching, see how it feels to draw. Does it feel natural? Um, is it fun? Is it fluid? Does it lag up here and there? And I'll be uh, just looking at some reference from a Graffiti Studio. That'll be the first thing I do and it will also act as a warm-up. And then after that, I wanna get into coloring and painting and messing with the layers, layer modes, and all that stuff. Um, now, I do have some brushes here that my buddy Zayden had recommended to me, so that's why you see these here. All I have to do, I mean, I, all I figured I had to do is just, and when you get them, you just drag and drop right into your um, Clip Studio dock where the brushes are. And so far, my initial takeaway by just, just doing the setup and sketching around for a little bit is that there's a lot of stuff on the screen, but once you get used to it, it, it starts to become really handy. And everything here is very customizable. And once you get rid of all the unnecessary things out of the way that you're not gonna use, like for example, if you're not animating, you don't need like the animation tools uh, open. So you just kind of close them and then you just leave it so that all that's left is what you need. All right. It's gonna put on some music and uh, jam out and start drawing.
Okay, so we got that uh, first, about a, you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour's worth of sketching in to uh, kind of try it out for just drawing. I was pretty uh, surprised with some things. So basically the one thing that kind of stood out to me is um, it, the blending on this brush is pretty good. So if I pick painterly, well, Photoshop Brown, uh, it's the, one of the brushes that my friend Zayden recommended to me. It, it has a nice blending to it. Like it, it doesn't just, um, you know, make pixels over things. It kind of blends with the existing uh, pixels that are there, which is kind of cool. And I mean, I was only trying to do a drawing and then it ended up becoming more of a painterly approach because of the brush. I was trying uh, some of these uh, weird brushes. Couldn't quite get that charcoal effect I was looking for. I've seen other people do it. It's a bit like this, but with more opacity. Uh, so anyway, so far so good with drawing. I mean, that's pretty uh, basic uh, introductory. Uh, pressure sensitivity, tilt, all that stuff is there. And by tilt, I mean, uh, let's see, let's find the tilt brush. It's like flat. Yeah, here it is. So this is basically a tilt brush. When I'm rotating my pen, it also rotates the tip of the brush. The The little preview of the brush is still looks vertical, but the brush is tilting. Uh, and that's definitely something I look for with um, painting programs and, and all that. Uh, by the way, I'm using a Huon Canvas 22, which I'll be doing a review on very soon. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that was that was fun. Not, not too bad. Um, Another cool thing that I really like is the the effect. If I grab my brush here and I ugh, I need to figure out why it keeps doing that. So I have my brush here and if I want to make a straight line, it's the same thing as Photoshop. I hold shift. But what this does is it shows a preview of the direction of where it's going to go. Like I've always had to like guess, uh, for example, if I wanted to uh, put like a sword on this girl's back like there or something, uh, I kind of had to put a dot here, hold shift, and then kind of guess the the final destination of it for that angle. But this, it, it shows you, I love it. Photoshop, take notes. Let's see, control Z, control Z, control Z. Great stuff so far. Now what I wanna do is jump into a painting, mess with brushes, layers, settings, and kind of deep dive into uh, what whatever's happening there. So what I'll be paying attention to are the brushes. So I'm gonna be looking for, um, you know, different textures, how they interact with each other, uh, as well as blending. Now there's a couple ways to blend. So for example, I could just, um, you know, have two colors like that and sort of select in between each one. And it actually blends really nicely. Um, as a Nice transition effect. Uh, but I can also grab this here, little uh, little droplets there. Um, but I also have it saved here in my quick access, which I was able to customize thanks to the help of uh, uh, some tutorials. But if you just use that as a blending tool, that works too. I think blur would work for that pretty well. All right, cool. So gonna sketch some, uh, some stuff to paint. I'm probably gonna do a portrait and try to get some skin tones in there and, and blend and, and see how that goes. So far, what I really like about this is this uh, this this blending quality. I don't know how to explain it. Um, like just just with this round brush, it has a nice softness to it, and it I don't know. It just feels like it kind of blends naturally. 
Um, it's really good for getting those skin tones in there. And the pressure sensitivity of the pen really makes a difference. I don't know if the pressure curves are different for this than, than what I'm used to. But if I press lightly, it kind of has a nice taper. Like, look at that, it kind of tapers uh, in a nice way. A lot of this feels pretty intuitive. Uh, now I come from a traditional painting background in terms of when I was training for uh, understanding how to paint, it was a lot of oils, a lot of acrylic, some gouache, and the way you layer colors and, and paints and, and uh, values kind of transfers over to this pretty well because of that blending quality. Okay, so, uh, wow. This was really definitely a nostalgic experience because it felt like I was painting again with uh, real paint. At least the process required that I treat it like that. I think uh, Photoshop offers a lot of crutches that kind of, you know, help you shoot past that. But uh, for example, um, I don't know, the way the colors are layered here, and not the colors, the brush strokes. So, uh, I guess you could do this in other programs, but I don't know, for some reason I feel a bit cornered to do this, but notice that there's a lot of texture here in the background. Um, I, I went in there with like a kind of a textured brush first. Uh, and then from there, I carved into that with a smooth brush. And that really kind of brings a lot of attention here. Um, I don't know, I, I, th I feel like because of the tools and the way they work, I, it kind of cornered me to do that. Um, mostly because I don't know how to use everything and so I just kind of clicked around and used whatever worked and it, and it just had this nice uh, classic, you know, somewhat renaissance style portrait of this kind of dark circus type of character. I'm working on a lot of dark circus stuff these days so go figure. But yeah, um, that, was, that was quite fun. Um, and uh, also another thing is that the, like, I, I don't really have options to get in there and be too detailed, which is kind of nice. I mean, I could get in there and detail everything, but because I'm not so familiar with the, with the program yet, it just, you know, I'm forced to simplify. What I mean by that I'm, is that I'm not gonna go in there and you know specify each one of these frills or whatever they're called and and render out the form and stuff i'd be tempted to do that in photoshop um, but here it's like i i really like just indicating it and the, because the brushwork carries that smoothness and color very well um and you know for my first painting in uh in clip studio paint i think it's pretty successful and it shows that it's intuitive if you've studied as a painter before or if you have a lot of experience in photoshop or corel painter or uh, paint tool sci i think this is a pretty interesting uh and great result so i mean i would recommend giving it a shot i think there's a, a free trial you know just get it see how you feel um plus for it being so cheap compared to other programs i mean i don't see why you wouldn't get this especially if you're starting out as a student so uh yeah i mean like let's take a look at the blending tool real quick uh i don't know how to do it yet but what i wish i could do is put a bristle property on this way maybe i can let's go to uh, a little wrench is there a texture yes let's add texture can i add oh hmm what does that do I can't really tell the difference there. All right, yeah, let me just show what I'm trying to do. Oh my God, this is my home turf now. Uh, 
I don't know. Yeah, okay. So what I'm looking for is something like the mixer brush like this. So this is pretty much the blend equivalent, but it has a bristle to it. So I got to figure out how to do that in Clip Studio. I don't want to get too, uh, too far into my comfort zone there. But yeah, wow, that was, that was really enjoyable to do. So a couple other things I noticed uh, that were really helpful. Um, uh, I mean, that would seem very helpful for like processes is these ruler guides, which we don't have in other, in Photoshop. So like a sym symmetry tool, like, ugh, I've been wanting that for so long. Um, that'd be really great for floral designs. Um, and all that. I think maybe the new updates of other programs have it, but I don't. I haven't updated yet. So what else? Is it? How do I get back to this? the rulers? Yes. Okay. There's a perspective tool, so you can set like different vanishing points. Um, not sure what guide is. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's just a guide. Yeah. So I guess if you you can use that as a guide to draw along with, maybe. Will it snap to it? Yes, it does. It snaps to the guide. Very cool. And you hold control, and, I, and that moves it away. And I just somehow knew that by by intuition. Uh, go back to rulers. Cool. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Oh, and you could yeah, hold control and then change the the anchor points of that too. Brilliant. It's almost like the pen tool, but the pen tool. Photoshop is not quite the same as that. Oh, and they make their own layers too. Okay, cool, let's delete those. So again, uh, this is not a tutorial video, but it's rather my dive into this program. Um, pretty much using it for the same purpose I would for my professional work and being able to pull this off without really having to do too many tutorials on how to use the program uh, it's pretty promising. You know, this is just one portrait, but I could totally imagine, um, you know, concepting a lot of characters, um, you know, setting up wireframes and pulling in some reference re research and uh, sketching on top of that and then painting it and then using the, the fun blending that this offers is, is just kind of enjoyable to do. And it's just something different. It just feels different um i almost can get this feeling with like uh procreate but not quite like this uh, also i think this is also probably at an advantage because it uh it's running on a powerful pc and this program is also available on ios where's i mean i think adobe tried to do that but come on it was laughable anyway so Pros, you know, plenty of customization, a lot of uh, assets that you can you can buy in terms of brushes. I think even like color swatches and 3D assets that you can pull in. Uh, then there's rulers, vector layers, speech balloons. I don't know where those are, but I read about it. I don't know. Let's see, vector layers. Yeah, cover that. It's just fluid and uh, intuitive to use. I mean, once you get past like all the menus and stuff, which are really not that hard at all, you're kind of good to go. The cons, I don't, I can't really confirm that the cons I have in mind are actual cons, but it's just, I'm, I don't, I can't find the liquify or some kind of uh, liquify tool. Um, and the lasso tool, I, I know there's something like the lasso tool somewhere here. I wonder if that was what the ruler Anyway, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm not finding the last one. I don't have any cons in terms of like why I wouldn't use this, uh, except for the fact that I've, I've put 20 years into the other program and it's just, it's just home to me. Um, one last thing I want to try is uh, blending mode. So let's set that to overlay. Overlay is my go-to. Basically, I like to use that to harmonize color in any given painting. So if I wanna make a color statement of orange, I'll just fill this in, and that works really beautifully here. Uh, what I'll do is go ahead and lower the opacity on that, 
Now it feels like a nice weathered old oil painting. Let's turn that off to compare, bring it back. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, filters, let's check out. So, I mean, short filter list, but that's perfectly fine. I don't, this is not a photo editing program. Yeah, uh, one, one weird thing I saw in a lot of people's videos, they always got rid of the navigator as their first thing. I love seeing the image small there so I could kind of peek at it and, and take a look at it. Yeah. Anyway, should you buy this? I believe so. If you know, if you're a student, if you're a professional, it's uh, valid for both places. It's really great for illustration. While this is commonly known uh, as a program that's really good for line art with its vector tools and, and all that and animation, I think it's clearly capable of a lot of things with painting. So my friend Zayden has been wanting me to try Clip Studio for a while. Uh, he's been talking about it and you know, the work he's done is great. So uh, <laughs> I finally uh, am doing it for this sponsored review and I actually brought him on to kind of show me the ropes a bit. So if you want to see a clip of him struggling to teach me how to use this thing, um, not struggling, he did a great job. Very thankful for that. Uh, just stick around and go ahead and watch that. Um, but overall, thanks to Clip Studio Paint for this opportunity and this sponsorship to check out the program. Definitely check the links in the description for Clip Studio Paint. Oh, I got my buddy Zayden here with me. What's up, my guy? What's up, man? Uh, so you've been telling me to use Clip Studio Paint for a long time now, and me as a Photoshop user, I'm checking it out right now. What are your thoughts? I thought Clip Studio would be pretty useful for you, sincerely, because I felt like it was all the fun of Photoshop without the... Uh, so. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. <laughs> So what, do I, what am I looking forward to? What, what am I going to expect with this? Uh, you told me something about vector layers. Say no more. The vector layers in Clip Studio Paint are really intuitive and allow for a lot of the pain that goes into the 40 million year process of making <laughs> line art. Yep. You do a lot of a line art, and so you find it very useful. I, I personally don't do too much line art, but let me let me give it a shot. So I've just made a new vector layer. So How about if, we make the good old-fashioned tic-tac-toe? Okay, okay, okay. All right, so I just... Cross them like that. And then you would change your eraser to the vector eraser. Yeah, and so we got just, that here. How about you try making a square? Tap each of those four lines out there. That's wow. crazy. Oh <laughs> it's, it's Wait, crazy. if I do this, will it? Oh! Yeah. Oh, so my easy. God. <laughs> it's so expeditious. And then um, if the paint, oh, the paint bucket tool is like really intuitive, too, to where like it'll fill in the gaps of the vector. Um, pretty neat. So... Okay, but so like here's like you right? kind of like raster like layers, so that's the one disadvantage of vector layers. You don't do oh. your painting on them, you do your line art on them, and nothing else. So if I want to do that uh, paint bucket fill thing where it fills in even if there's a gap, oh, you just go to the paint bucket, go to the thing, and you can adjust for how egregious your gap. Like if you feel like you really can't draw a circle, turn it up all the way. If you feel like you got the chops, mm, oh, cool, all right. Bit. It's yeah. You just keep clicking to fill it in. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And by the way, thanks for all these uh, brush recommendations. Appreciate that. So, what is your besides the uh, vector stuff and line art? Uh, what is your favorite thing about this? Like when it comes to painting. When it comes to painting, my favorite thing about it is just how versatile each of the brushes can be. Whether you can turn, like when you hit the little wrench on your properties panel, Ooh, uh, you're allowed down here? to custom. Yeah. Okay. You're allowed to like customize it, meaning like, oh, oh this is right. a brush that I'm using for sketching. How about I want to make it into a painting? Uh, let's just go to ink, and you can turn on, like, I want to blend with it. I want to make it into a watercolor. You can edit these brushes to all. My favorite thing is finding a texture brush and liking the style of the brush, but not really liking the texture. And you mm -hmm. can go in and change the individual texture of the brush to make it a completely different copy. So you can duplicate the Oh, process. that's yeah, crazy. You can be like, oh man, I wish this had a more charcoal-esque feel. And it just completely changes the brush. And so you can also, my favorite oh. thing about it, yeah, it's so useful, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a uh, bit more complicated in Photoshop. <laughs> no worries, but once you see all the th your assets, you're able to play with the world. Um, so yeah, I just think the brush engine is just really intuitive and 
customizable. Also, you can organize your brushes so much neater. Yeah, this quick access thing has been really great. Oh, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking oh. about like, oh man, these are my go-to brushes. So you see how you have your little cubbies up there? Basically, uh, you have all, yeah, and you have those four little thing above your brushes. Yeah. Yeah. You can drag one of any of your brushes and just start building. Like these are the ones I'm using when I'm rendering. This is one I'm using for sketching. It's oh. really nice to organize all your brushes in one uh, streamlined go. Dude, I appreciate you showing me all this, uh, as opposed to me trying to figure everything out. I mean, I did watch a couple of tutorials to try to dive in here, but well, I'll be honest, nobody really talks about this program like as much as I've seen. So I got you, dude. You're a blessing. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, the command bar. My favorite thing about the yeah, program okay. is just... Where is uh, it? The command bar is that uh, thing where you see where you have that save icon. Yeah. So you would go to file, command settings, command bar settings, true. And then you're like, oh man, what if you have, say, oh, I like using the adjustment layer, but I hate just going to layer, adjustment layer, and picking it all uh, in that one motion. To save right. time, what you can do is drag any of those... Op- so how about we try adding the tra- like free transform? So go to like edit, go out. yeah, let's go to edit, oh, no, nah, let's just add an adjustment. Yeah, go to layer, new correction layer, and try adding hue and saturation up to your bar. Oh, hold up, hold up. Uh, new correction layer, hue satch. And, mm-hmm, and just what? drag it to the top of your bar. You can either click add or you can literally drag. Of the quick access bar or which bar? Oh, like, so click the let words and then just drag it up to the top up there. Yeah. Yeah, yep, like all the way up where you hey, see well, your save icon. Like, oh, up here. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah, so bam, instead of doing all that, no way. on it and it's just there. So what I would do, whether it's like, oh, man, my scene is too bright. I wish I could kill the lighting. I would just duplicate the layer and just add the level tools up top, and bam, it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. You can add levels. You can add free transform. You can add literally all the painstakingly steps of you know, where everything is just up there. It's just so useful. Take notes, also, Adobe. Also, Clip, uh, Clip Studio was nice enough to make a lot of the shortcuts in Photoshop usable in here. Yeah, like, nice. Just hold R and just mask stuff. You can... So it's pretty... It takes into account that there's some people who, you know, need a, a, Here's- a pilgrimage to a new world. <laughs> Here's, here's a problem that I was having. Um, so I'll do this or whatever, and I'll go to user erase or whatever, and then I'll hit B a couple times, and it like goes to these other brushes, like airbrush or like this thing. Uh, is there a way to just make it go to only one brush? Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Like just, you mean just like toggle it? Yeah, because I like I don't. I, I when don't I go here, it, all of them have it, B. But I know you can. It's, okay, uh, okay. It's, it's in the shortcut settings. Uh, All right, so you just got used to it? Oh, uh, yeah, because I never, I never really hit anything. Uh, the only button I hit on my keyboard when I paint is just like, oh, really? Oh, for color pick? <laughs> like, I don't really um, uh, toggle anything, but I know you can. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's the modifier key settings. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it'll allow you to, like, oh, I'm using my brush, but if I hit a button, it'll toggle to, toggle to my blender or anything. You can use yeah. that. You can assign what that letter could be if you really want. You can also assign like it flipping a canvas. But oh, so I, I did never, that one. Yeah, for sure. Which I never do when they give me a nice little panel up top to just see what direction everything is, which I <laughs> like why there's so neat. It's crazy how much you can get out of one brush and then how many brushes it offers to you. Mm. All right, man. I think that's, that's enough uh, overview. Uh, for for now um i seriously truly appreciate your help here um no worries man no glad worries you're, for everyone. Uh, i'll definitely have your uh, information in the description if anyone wants to see your work and uh follow you ask you questions about clip studio delightful yeah uh, all right thanks man take care all right another thank you to clip studio paint for the sponsored video and be sure to check out the free trial download in the description thanks for watching and i'll see you next time